you are holy you are holy and gave supremely that all men might see you are gentle tender hearted reason savior you are lord you are lovely you are lovely you are lovely gave supremely gave supremely that all men might see that you are gentle you are gentle, tender-hearted, tender-hearted, reason Savior, reason Savior, you are Lord, you are Lord, yes, you are Lord, you are Lord, yes, you are Lord, you are Lord, we we'll praise you, Lord Jesus. We'll lift up your name. We'll bless your holy name. For who you are and the mighty things that you have done. Oh, yeah, don so kara braba bayaske chala daya landa rabados kotulu baha ye ke baradas ke tili brahasta how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be oh ah. Marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Sing it again. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Marvelous, and how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Oh, is my Savior's love for me, and is my Savior's love for me we we'll praise you lord how marvelous how wonderful how wonderful how wonderful it's my savior's love for me everybody is it i do so kura by i had we praise you lord we praise you lord blessed be your name O god Ya de borodo so kura brada baba haya skedis. Yi karabado so toroba ya kataraba. Non toroba da da baba ha. Nengere bado so toroba ya skedis. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we lift our holy hands. In one accord, singing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised and adored. And we'll lift our holy hands. So we lift up holy hands. We want to call and sing in blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How lovely to wake up with that in the morning. You know, you see that song talks about so many things. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Say, who is worthy? He is worthy to be praised and adored. And then it identifies exactly where you are and what you carry. He says, so we lift up holy hands. Yes. We lift up holy hands and sing with our mouth, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Regardless of where you are in your life, let the name of the Lord be praised. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Whether you feel like you are in the valley or you are on the mountaintop, let the name of the Lord be praised. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let the devil not catch you sad. Let him not catch you sad. Let him find the name of the Lord in your mouth. You praise in the name of the Lord. You don't know what to do. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going through difficult times. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The work, the job is not working, or they said the business is going down. Oh, no, no, no. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Ah. 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 Lifting up holy hands. Lifting up holy hands. And praising the most high. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let the name of the Lord be praised. You find yourself in a hopeless situation. Ah, 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 ah. Let the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord must be praised. Yes, we praise you, Lord. Yah, the hallowed one. Yah, the holy one. Yah, the king of Zion. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Anyang dere bonzanka te kebaradon zikri badondro bohos tutaba. Lenda badosun to barakan zorobrondo song rebihasta. Rin the blonde yo song go pante kero gon zoom praning galondo yo song toroba. Rin the brando song gro badin gro badiso talig da hiso. Rin the balanon shanti reberadon singlo di sora brande re hiso. Land the brodo bo so tabanon kusande le boyosa. In manonze kera bradayastos. In a man se te kera badonzo kora braha. Rimon so to bradikan de brado soraha. Rom de monto rigo non su sander bosta. In the Bradonso Kora Brabaha, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to this. Psalm 147. It says, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. So it is good. It's a good thing to sing praises to our God. Oh, so every time you sing praise to our God, you know you are doing a good thing. Glory to God. It is good to sing praises to others. He said, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. Glory to God. You don't, have, you don't have beauty in your life or you are looking sad and dejected. Praise. Praise for a change. 
You know, that guy, I, I, I can't remember his name. He said, praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Even when I'm going through. Praise is what I do. So, praise the Lord for it is good to sing praises to our God for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. Now hear this. Hear this. He said, the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcast of Israel. Why is he saying that? Because he, he builds his people. Regardless of where you are in your life, say, say to yourself, the Lord builds up Jerusalem. And you know what? He calls you his holy people. His holy people. His holy people. He builds me up. He builds me up. Every time I, 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 I may not feel it today, but he builds me up. And guess what I do? I just lift my holy hand to him and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. He said, he gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Did you see that? He binds up their wounds. So in the place of praise, there is a binding of wounds. There is a healing of the brokenhearted. There is a gathering together, the outcasts of Israel. There is in the place of praise. What did the Bible say? About the Lord. He said he, he inhabits. Yeti liti. He inhabits the praises of his people. So as you are praising him, he, 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 he just takes over. He just takes over. He comes upon you in his, in his fullness, in his glory. He inhabits the praises of his people. The praises of his people. There is nowhere you praise the Lord where he is not present. He inhabits the praises of his people. Mm. 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 Look at verse number four. Glory to God. Look at verse four. He said, he counts the number of the stars. He counts the number of the stars. And he says, he calls them all by name. You see, where you are standing, he names you a star. And he calls you by name. He calls you by name. Why? Because he expects you to go out and light up your world. Light up your world. Light up your world. Tonight, I'm talking about what I've titled, Changing Hopeless Situations. Changing Hopeless Situations. This is principle number one. Just praise him. Praise him. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him. Praise him. They said it's so difficult. I'm not sure what to do. I'm so confused. Just praise him. Praise him. If your mouth can open, that's all you need. That's all you need. Just praise him. You are lying on your bed. You don't feel like talking. Lift those hands. Let it start in your spirit. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. You see, mm, you, you may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Mm, glory to God. I know you'll stand up again in a minute, but it's okay. Ah, hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? They say a situation is hopeless. What is hopeless? As long as you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, no situation is ever hopeless. He said, I've been praying and praying and praying and praying and nothing is changing. May I, may I say, brothers and sisters, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. The Bible says, in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand. Don't stop. Say, I've been praying. But you be careful the type of prayer that you pray. Because there are some prayers that would not work. So don't bother yourself praying that type of prayer. But there are some prayers that are, that, are, that are designed to work. This type of prayer that aligns with the will of the Father. The Bible says, if you shall ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. So when things aren't working, ask yourself, am I asking in accordance with his will? And guess what, brothers and sisters? When you align with his will, it's just like when you set the right passcode and, and the appliance opens. 
When you align with his wills, the doors open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Glory, hallelujah. Mm. It says here, And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, or I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And that's a rhetoric question. I said, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything? Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? You see, at times it's important to ruminate on that word. You know what they call the process of rumination? You chew again on it. You may have chewed it before and swallowed it. You see, you know, the, the, there's this animal, the cow. He's got two tummy, right? Yes. He eats, chews, and reserves in the first tummy. And then later on when nothing else is going on, he sits down all by himself. Have you ever seen a cow sit down, do nothing, keeping quiet? No, he, he just keeps quiet and keeps chewing. And you are wondering, what is he chewing? Yes. What he ate yesterday? He's bringing it back. It, it, it's called the process of regurgitation. And chewing back on it. Then before it goes to the second stomach. That is when it benefits the body. Can I, can I say that again? That is when it benefits your soul. That is when it refreshes your soul. You see, the first time you hear a word, it might, it might stir you up. It might fill you. And you go, oh, wow, that's lovely. No, 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 no. Don't, don't let it die there. Go back. And chew again on it. Yes. Say, Lord, what, I, what do I need to learn from this? What do I need to take away from this? What do I need to change in myself about this? And chew again and chew again and chew again. And let it nourish your spirit. Hallelujah. He said, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And he asked Jeremiah. And that same question is asking you today. I'm not sure where you are. You, you probably might be sitting right here in the room or you probably might be there, you know, um, online, whether on Facebook or on YouTube or on Twitter, wherever you are. It's like the, the Lord is saying, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? There are people who feel like, oh, well, I've been praying, nothing is changing. But the Lord is saying, is there anything too hard for me? He said, but I've been praying. How come nothing is changing? Then the question is, how have you been praying? What type of prayers have you been praying? Because your prayers, when aligned with the will of God, can change hopeless situation. Yes, yes. It can. It can. Hallelujah. Think about Hannah. Hannah, 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 Hannah. Hannah, the mother of Samuel. She paid... Pray the prayer that changed the course of her life. She was called barren. In other words, she had no capacity to bear children. No capacity. Until she went to the temple and prayed to the Lord. The Bible tells us that her mouth was moving. You remember the cow? But no words were coming out. But she knew what she was doing. Her mouth was moving. You know, at times, your mouth ought to move in such a way that connects with your spirit that says, I remember the things you, you've done of old. I remember the mighty things that you have done. I remember. I remember. You see, you didn't just find yourself here. You came from somewhere. And where did you come from? Who gave birth to you? Now, now the Bible says being born, ag born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by what? By the word of God which lives and abides forever. 
So when you are thinking about where you, you've come from, you are no longer thinking about your earthly father or your mother. Why? Because when you got born again, you cease to be connected to your earthly biological lineage. You cease to be connected there. And people say, interestingly, right? People say that, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the, the sin of the fathers. Uh, or uh, the curse upon whoever. No, no, no. As a child of God, it no longer affects you. Or rather, it should no longer affect you. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Why? Because the very moment you got born again, you were disconnected from the biological relationship and connected to eternal relationship. That although we know people, he said, no, we know man after the flesh. Hey. He said, this Jesus you are seeing. He said, he's not just ordinary. He said, if you see him as Jesus, the son of Joseph, that's all you get. But when you see him as Jesus, thou son of David, there's something completely different that comes into play. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus, the Son of God. The Bible tells us how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Yes. You see, that Jesus, when you make connection with him, he changes your life completely. He changes your life. There were those who made connection or con contact with Jesus. They couldn't stop but say, my Lord and my God. For them to look at a man and call him my Lord and my God, it means there is a connection that bypasses the biological connection. Yes. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Now get to understand that the same Lord and God is at work in you today. And it can change every situation for good. So Hannah prayed and prayed. Her mouth was moving. And the priest saw her and thought, oh, no, come on. It's too early to be drunk. I wonder the type of life they lived back then. But it, the priest looked at her and said, well, what is wrong with you? It's too early to be drunk. Oh, Lord. First Samuel. First Samuel, glory to God. Too early. <laughs> and I'm almost sure Hannah could, could almost, by the Holy Spirit, says, I'm not drunk, sir. I'm just filled. Hey. First Samuel chapter 1. <laughs> verse number verse number nine so Anna arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord and she was in bitterness of soul Bitterness of soul. Why? Because she couldn't have a child. And interestingly, she was the second wife of Elkanah. And dear Penina, who is the first wife, feels like, well, I'm not sure what you're doing here. You know, of course, back then, they were allowed to marry more than one wife. Don't try it today. You'd, you'd even die before you exist. <laughs> right? You know? So the, she was the second wife, but she couldn't have a child. And that should have told her you're in the wrong relationship, isn't it? But she couldn't. And every day, every day, she felt humiliated for the lack of a child. She felt humiliated because there was nothing to show for the relationship. Although the husband, Elkanah, would usually say, but you know I love you. You are, more, you are worth more than ten children to me. Anna knew those were just words. And those words were only plaster 
as in a band aid. It will wear off. The children of the other woman running around and you're wondering, oh, God. You see, today, at times, you know, it's, it might not even be children. It probably might be the physical things that other people own and have, and you're looking, everyone has everything but me. And you're wondering, but God, did you leave me here? Why did you leave me here? Everyone is buying a house but me. Everyone is graduating but me. Everyone is having, you know, um, for some, everyone is having their citizenship, their permanent residency but me. Everyone, everyone is making progress in life but me. Everyone is having a good relationship with their husband but me. You know, everyone, everyone but me. Oh, 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 stop, stop, stop. Look at the life of Hannah for a moment, for a change. Look at the life of Hannah. And Hannah thought like you. Anna thought even worse. Anna thought this is so bitter. The Bible tells us that she was in the bitterness of soul. It says, so Anna arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul. I don't know how that feels, but that feels really bitter. Actually, bitterness of soul almost sounds like depression. She's done. Nothing, nothing else can ever make her happy. Not even the words of her loved one. You are what more than ten children to me say, hey, come on, stop. Stop fooling me. You said that last year. You said that five years ago. You said that all the time. But how, why do I feel the way I feel? Why do I continue to feel the way I feel? So she was in bitterness of soul. And what did she do? She prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow. Mm. Now she's coming into a contractual relationship with the Lord. She made a vow. Now remember the words of James. He said, you, you, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss. You ask wrongly. To use it upon your own lust. So basically, you remember on Sunday when we were talking about it, that every time you, you ask something of the Lord, uh, it's like drawing up, or, or drawing up a business proposal. You remember that? Yeah. You need to add in that proposal what benefits the Lord. Yeah. What does it mean to the Lord? Yeah. What does it mean to the people of God? What does it mean to the kingdom of God? Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. So that is the ought to come first. So in everything that we do, we ought to, to have the, the kingdom of God and the righteousness in focus, in view. So change in hopeless situation, you need to rewrite your, um, you know, your contract or your business proposal. Need to rewrite it and position the kingdom of God right at the middle of it. Right at the middle of it. Now here, Hannah, so lovely woman. The Bible says here, then she made a vow and said, she made a vow, she made a vow, Lord, what you are giving me is not mine. Is yours. Really, that's what she said. Here, he said, Oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. She was specific. She didn't just say a child. Now, here it is. She, she didn't even have any. You know, back then in, in Bible days, um, it, I don't know why, but they, they always consider the male child, you know, the heir of everything. You know, the male child was more important than, than 20 girls, so to speak. Well, I don't know why that was. Uh, perhaps because they said the male child is the one that carries on the name of the family because the, the, the female child goes on to inherit uh, another person's name but does not continue with the family. So the male child was considered, you know, Everything. 
So if someone has a male child, it feels like they, they have a kingdom. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because in Galatians, he changed it. He changed it in Galatians. He said, if you are in the Lord, there is neither male nor female. There's neither born nor free. Praise God. So the guys are not, not more important than the girls. And the girls are no more important than the guys. So you're all one in the Lord. So praise God. Hallelujah. All one in the Lord. But here, you know, back then, contextually, the male child meant everything. And so she was not just asking for a child. Not that she had girls. But she was asking specifically. So in other words, when you do ask of the Lord, be specific. Be spe specific. Don't just say, Lord, give me. Whatever you want, give me. And God is saying, but you don't ask anything. Someone comes to you and said, and you're saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Say, what do you want to eat? Say, food. What is food? What kind of food? Food, anything, food. Okay. And someone who cares for you. We'll say, I'll bring something to you that is nutritious and I will, you know. And then they bring broccoli. Oh, glory to God. A bucket full of broccoli. There are some people who will run away. All right? But it's good for you. I say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I don't need broccoli. I need KFC. So it's important. When you ask the Lord for something, be specific. Say, Lord, this is exactly what I want. You see, some of us are not specific because we are even afraid that our prayers will be answered. We are not even sure of whom we are asking anything. God is too distant. He's too far away for us to even imagine that he will hear you. At times, some of us are even too small in our own eyes to be heard by a great God. So, so why do I even bother myself asking? So, but just for the sake, just for the sake, just for the sake of Nelly who is looking at me, and the sake, you know, of Esosa who is looking at me, and the sake of everybody who is looking, I'm just going to pray. So at times, some people just pray for your sake. We pretend to be holy while we are with you, you know. We pretend to know the Lord while we are in the midst of others. But brothers and sisters, your relationship with God is personal. In as much as, as iron sharpens iron, so ought we to sharpen ourselves. But you've got to be the one sharpening yourself, or rather allowing yourself to be sharpened. Otherwise, you grow blunt. And you'll be used for nothing. So this woman, this amazing woman, made a vow to the Lord. Made a vow. Specifically. So, oh Lord, if you will indeed look on the affliction. So he called not having a child an affliction. An affliction. What do you consider an affliction in your life today? There is a need for a vow to come in place. Connect it to the kingdom. Anything not connected to the kingdom is destined to fail. May I say that again? Anything con not connected to the kingdom is destined to fail. So connect it to the kingdom. He said, oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him. Whoa. He said, if you give me, then I will give him. In other words, whatever you are giving me, God is yours already. If you give me, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Woo! How many of us would dare say that? How many of us are bold enough to say, Lord, if you give it to me, it's yours already. And it's yours forever. Ooh. Ah. 
Say, Lord, give me this business. It's yours. Even in relationships, say, Lord, Lord, I, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for my husband. He's yours. You know, there are some people, I don't know, in some instances, there are people who are looking for a wife or a husband. It's not just a man or a woman you are looking for. You are looking for a wife. You are looking for a husband. Now, listen to this and make, please be clear. You are not just looking for a man or a woman. If it was just a man or a woman you were looking for, you will find. But you're looking for a wife or a husband. It says a good wife is what? A blessing of the Lord. It's a blessing. So in other words, specific, specifically crafted. A good husband. Specific, specifically crafted. Glory to God. So you're not just looking for anything. So how about you say, Lord, you give me that wife, I'll give her to you. Uh, you give me that husband, he is yours forever. There are people, after they are married, they're saying, but you know we are married now, we are too busy for the Lord. We can't, we can't, we can't. No, he ought, she ought to be tied to the kingdom. Otherwise, Mm. You will lose the essence of the relationship. Yes, right. Before you got married, you were busy for the Lord. Great things were happening in your life. You were cursing, you were cursing lives to come to the Lord every day. Now, immediately you got married. To her, there's an excuse. But you know... We've got to go away. You know, we don't have enough time to spend together, so this time we've got to spend together. How about with the Lord? Oh, Lord, am I causing trouble now? How about with the Lord? How about with the Lord first? With the Lord first. How many of you have had a relationship where you say, this man, Lord, is yours. This woman, Lord, is yours. You come first before any other person, Lord. Give him or her to the Lord and you will never lack for anything. It is the truth. It is the truth. It is the truth. Learn from Anna. For you to change hopeless situation, put a vow to it. So give, your, give your, your maid servant a male child, and I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. In other words, he will be a Nazarite unto the Lord, a chosen one to the service of the Lord. I will make him serve you. He says, no razor shall come upon his head. Now, he's already, she is already planning and setting the course of this boy in accordance with the path of the Lord. Now, the boy has not even come to life. She, she has already decided the path that she would, he would tread. You know you can do that in your business. You know you can do that with your children. You know you can do that in your job. You know you can do that in every area of your life. Say, Lord, I may not have it right here, but now that I'm waiting on it, this is what will happen in accordance, in line with your will, with your purpose for me. Say, I'm making an investment, Lord. There is an investment. I'm investing in a particular thing. Nevertheless, with that investment, this is you in it. This is what I'm doing about it for you, Lord. Mm. Glory to God. Woo! Glory to God. So no razor shall come upon his head. Even if the child says, oh, this hair is too heavy, I need to cut it. He said, no, 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 my son. No, 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 no. This is a vow. This is an indication. You are a blessed one of a blessed God. Verse number 12. And he said, and it, and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli washed her mouth. 
Eli couldn't hear what she was saying, but Eli washed her mouth. Now, Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved. Mm. Mm. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Uh, so it, it tells us that, you know, the prayers does not have to be loud. All right? For God to hear it, God's ears. God, God is not deaf, you know. Oh, God! No, shut up. Just pray softly. <laughs> you know? What? Can, can I say this also? That at times your prayer needs to be loud. Because your, 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 your life needs to hear your own prayer. There are things around you in your circumstance, in your life that are deaf. They just need to hear the word of God. <laughs> So I wouldn't blame you if, you if you scream out praying. But that is not for the benefit of God. That's for your own benefit. Yes. Amen? Yes. Aha, praise God. Okay. So you don't have to yell and scream and la- and aloud. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Calm down. Calm down. But we do pray loud. Praise God. We pray loud. We yell it. And why do we do that? We're saying, Lord... <laughs> I'm committed to this thing. I'm not hiding it. Everyone's got to hear it. See, and it's happened. Verse 12 again. As she continued praying before the Lord that Eli washed her mouth, now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Perhaps if she prayed out loud a little bit, Eli would have known that she was praying. You know, at times when you pray, in the train, and you're speaking in tongues. Some people might be looking at you and going, oh, she lost it already. <laughs> so you don't know what is going on. And at times you pray out just a little bit for the next person to hear. And perhaps the part that you want them to hear is, in the name of Jesus. That will get their attention. <laughs> oh, Lord. That will get their attention. They will look at you again. Say, so, oh, he's praying. They might not understand every other word you're saying. They cradi has to sing parada haskala. Rodo baske tele yon to so to your katabradi askuta. In the name of the Lord Jesus. La tebra. And they're going, oh, what language is he speaking? But you are touching heaven, changing earth through those words of yours. Glory to God. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. In other words, stop drinking. But Anna answered and said, no, my Lord. Mm. You know, I almost compare Anna with Peter in the book of Acts chapter 3. When Peter stood up, or chapter 2, when Peter stood up and said, we are not drunk as you thought we are. We are full of the Holy Ghost. At this point, Anna was not full of the Holy Ghost, but there was something she was full of. Let's hear what she says. She said, but Anna answered and said, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. In other words, she was full of sorrow. She said, I've drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. In other words, at the feet of the master, pour out your dis- distress and depression. Say, so, Lord, have it. I'm not having it anymore. Just like you said tonight, just before you leave, you say, Lord, you know, everything that, that has troubled me, have it. Pour it out before you, Lord. So I've drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman. Mm. <laughs> Why would she even say that? Why would she say, don't consider your servant a wicked woman? Does that then mean that people who drink are wicked? <laughs> oh, I'll leave you with that thought. <laughs> ah. Ah. Say, for out of the abundance of my complaints and grief, I have spoken unto you now. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Inasmuch as Hannah's situation was dire, she was desperate, but she poured it out before the Lord. 
Do you know there are some situations that IVF cannot fix? It will keep failing. Problem might do it three times, four times, five times. It keeps failing. And you're spending thousands of dollars. Can I say there is a solution in the house of the Lord? It's called the house of miracle. In this house is the balm of Gilead. Healing balm. That right there, you li- the, the hands are laid on you and the word of God is spoken over you. And it becomes the fruit of the womb. It, it becomes success in your life. It, it, it just becomes. Verse 17, then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. In other words, I'm not going to pray for you. Whatever you've asked of the Lord, yes. so be it unto you. Yes. And what did Jesus always say? He said, be it unto you, according to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. So in other words, faith is a victory that overcomes the world. Yes. Glory to God. And she said, let your mates have and find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate and faced, and her face was no longer sad. Whoa, maladia, kase. You see, you've got to take specific actions, isn't it? Once you have prayed, don't go carrying the long face. Because when you carry a long face, it means your prayer was already defeated at the, point, at the place of prayer. Yes. You've defeated yourself. But stand up, understanding fully that you spoke to God. Understanding fully that you spoke to the God who loves you. Understanding fully, uh, that, that brings to mind what Jesus said. Jesus said, Jesus said, oh, love it. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, mm. see, how many of you being evil? If your children ask you for bread, you give them stone, or they ask you for fish, you give them serpent. He said, although you being evil, in other words, you being human, you know how to give good gifts to your children. Say, how much more God, your father? Who's willing and able to give you everything in abundance for you to enjoy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if that is the case, when you stand up after praise, let your face show the answer to your prayer. Yes. Let it be seen on your face. So you've just finished praying. So sister, how is it? Say, so, I don't know. I don't know. I've prayed. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. And they, and they call it a waiting game. It's a waiting game now. Oh, you wait. You wait. There's nothing wrong in waiting. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord. So you could wait. But it didn't say they that wait upon the Lord for five minutes or ten hours. And there are those who wait for 40 years, you know. Yes. And they will keep waiting. Yeah. But how about bounce out and say, Lord, thank you, Lord. You know, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. You say, what is done? No, I just prayed. And it's done. Mm-hmm. Praise God. You see, every time you say amen, what does, what does it mean? What does amen mean? So be it. And actually, he's saying, it's done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. So you stand up and say amen. Let your face show it. It's done. It's done. How do you change hopeless situation? On your knees. And when you get up, consider it done. Consider it done. Because the Lord's hand is not too heavy that he cannot save you. His ears is not too heavy that he cannot hear you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then Samuel was born. Samuel was born. And then Anna prayed another prayer. Now this prayer, we we could hear what she said. The first one, we we didn't hear. (laughs) But the second one we heard in chapter 2. So, and Anna, verse 1, and Anna prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My heart is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies. Praise God. He said, because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord. For there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. 
So talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken. And those who stumbled are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread. And the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has burnt seven. And she has now, uh, oh, and, who, and she who has many children has become feeble. In other words, the barren, the one who never had a child, has born seven. In other words, this one that I have is perfect. It's perfect. It surpasses the value of all our seven children. And those who had more, who are not asked of the Lord, their children are failing. So, but this one, this one, this is a special one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Can I share with you three other principles before we finish? The second principle is what I call the mirror principle. The mirror principle. And the mirror principle suggests that you copy everything that you see. Isn't it? You show it exactly the way you've seen it. Mirror mirrors exactly what it sees. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Can you put that up very quickly? Ephesians 5, verse 1. You know, if you stand before the mirror and move your left leg, what do you think the mirror image will do? <laughs> it moves exactly the same. Right? If you are nodding your head, do you think a mirror image will have their heads straight and not smiling? If you smile at the mirror, the mirror image will smile back at you. So the mirror image will only do what you do. All right. Now, first and foremost, you, can you look up here? so that you're not lost in your own study. I know why you're studying. God is showing you amazing things. But look up here for a moment. Who are we? When God created us, what did he create? He said, let us make man in our own image. In other words, we should mirror him. Right? We should mirror him. Whatever we see the Father do, that ought, that ought we to do. Jesus said, as the Father does, so I do. In other words, he does whatever he sees the Father do. We are God's own image. So Ephesians 5 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, this is one of my favorite scriptures. And you can make it yours today. At the end of the month, just, you know, I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> All right, 5 verse 1. It said, therefore, be imitators of God. Woo! Wow. It said, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Yeah. I'll read the same scripture for you uh, in the... Amplified version for a change. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. Mm. Are you there? Do you want to put it, put it on the screen? This is interesting. It says, therefore, become imitators of God, copy him, and follow his examples. Did you see that? So he's saying, copy God and follow. Don't only just copy and follow. Copy him and follow his examples. As well-beloved children imitate their father. So do you call him father? Then copy him. Copy him and follow his examples. Amen. 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 All right then. So Ezekiel chapter 37. Let's have a look at that. Ezekiel 37. Copy him and follow his example. Be ye therefore imitators of God as beloved children. If you love the Lord, one way you can show that you love the Lord is to copy him. 
and follow his examples. So how did God do it before now? How has he ever done it? Check. You've got a reference book. It talks about the Lord. So just check. In this particular situation, what did he do? Oh, this is what he did. I will do the same thing. You know, uh, Psalm chapter 2. He said, and the Lord shall laugh at them and have them in derision. When situation happened before, you just go, ha, 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 ha. You might not feel like laughing, but you are copying and following. An example. So just laugh. In the name of Jesus. Chapter 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. Set me down in the midst of a valley that was hopeless. Hopeless valley. A valley full of bones. Then the Lord caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. I like the idea of very. So he could have just said, there were many and they were dry. No, he said they were very many and they were very dry. In other words, this is hopelessly hopeless. There's nothing you can do about it. There is no, well, the bone, that bone is not quite dry and there's still a bit of flesh on it. No, he said they were dry, they were many and they were dry. Very dry. And the Lord said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And what would you say, what would you have said, can these bones live? What would you say, considering how dry the bones were? Now, don't forget who described the situation of the bones. It was not the Lord that described the situation, the condition of the bones. It was Ezekiel who described the condition of the bones. In other words, God did not see the way Ezekiel saw. So you might look at your situation as hopeless, but God does not perceive it the way you perceive. He sees it differently. I'm not sure if I said it last week. When God sees you, he doesn't see you as someone who is missing out on anything. Because the way he sees you, you are complete. The way he sees you, everything you ever need is available to you. He sees you as an authority in your own life. So if you have not done anything in your life to change it, it's more like, well, it's your choice. You have everything that it takes. You have the wherewithal to do anything that you've got to do in your life. So if you've not done it, it's up to you. So here it is again in chapter 37, verse number, um, number 2. It said, Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, can these bones leave? I like Ezekiel. Because he knew that was a trap. He knew that was a trap. Now, this time, he was meant to speak his believing, and the guy refused. He he refused to speak what he was seeing, and he said, Oh, Lord God, you know. And at times, it's important to put the ball back in the Lord's basket, or rather, in his court. Put Put the ball back in his court. What do you want to do? Oh, Lord, whatever you tell me. Whatever you tell me, I will do. I am obedient to your spirit. Lord, Holy Spirit, take over me. I'm obedient to your spirit. Wherever you tell me to go, I will go. Say, you you know, but but Lord, can you bless this business? But if you choose not to bless it, Lord, I'm okay. I'm okay. Because whatever you tell me, I will do. Nevertheless, while you are blessing this business, get to understand, Lord, that this business will foster your kingdom. It will drive your kingdom forward. That's all I've got to say. But if you choose not to bless it, I still will love you, Lord. I still will raise my hands to you in praise. So here, he said, Son of man, can this bone live? So I answered, Oh, Lord, God, you know. Again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord God to this bone, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skins and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Okay. God has spoken. Did anything happen to the bones? Brothers and sisters, talk to me now. Did anything happen to the bones? Yes. No. Nothing happened to the bones. God spoke. Nothing happened. Why? Because God is not in our situation. So in the situation, he has positioned you as his mouthpiece. He's not the one to speak into your situation. You are the one to speak into your situation. Nevertheless, don't forget, you've got to hear what he asked you to say. So he said to Ezekiel, he said, speak to these dry bones. Say to the dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. And then he painted a picture for Ezekiel to see. And what was the picture? He said, again, the Lord said to me, prophesy, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. He didn't say, oh, dry bones, hear the word of Ezekiel. So hear the word of the Lord. So every time we are praying, we are not praying in accordance with the need that we have. We are praying in accordance with what the Lord has said about the need that we have. Amen. Amen. So, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall leave. Picture number one. Picture number two, and I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall leave. And then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So there's a third thing that is unspoken. But I was put right there at the last one. In other words, I will bring intelligence back to you for you to know that I am the Lord, your God. So it's not, it will not just end in causing sign news to come upon you. It's not just, it will not just end in causing uh, skin to come upon you and breath to come upon you. It will also in, infuse inside of you intelligence for you to know that I am the Lord, your God. Ah, but at that very moment, nothing happened. In verse 7, because at times, we stop there. You see, at times, during service, the word of prophecy go out. And we hear it and say, oh, Lord, yeah, thank you, Lord. But you've not done anything. So guess what? It doesn't happen. At times, during service, we hear the thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, I will curse you to ride upon the high places of the earth. And we go, amen, amen, amen. But nothing has happened. You are still here riding in low places. So, so Lord, when is the high places coming? Until you speak the same words. So hear it. Verse 7. It says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Ooh. I prophesied as I was commanded. Isn't it the reason why we ought to write down the things that God is speaking to us? Even while we are speaking like this, you ought to write down. Because that is what you are going to prophesy later. Someone is speaking words of prophecy. You've got to get your pen out and write it down. Write it down. Because that is, those are the words you've got to mirror later. That is what I call the mirror principle. You've got to mirror those words later. Verse 7, say, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Hear this? And as I prophesied, there was a noise. But while God was speaking, was there a noise? No. no. Until Ezekiel started speaking what the Lord has said. He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. So in other words, just the, the way the Lord said it, it happened. But it didn't happen until I said what the Lord said, asked me to say. He said, son of man prophesy, and I prophesied as I was commanded. So the mirror principle. 
which means every time you hear the word of the Lord concerning your situation, you've got to repeat it over and over until it settles in your spirit. Because it is when you do repeat it and say it in faith that you hear the rattling, you hear the noise, you hear the wind, you see the bones coming together to his bones, you see the sinews coming upon it, you see those who will cause the business to flourish coming together. You are thinking, where did these people come from? You may not know, but they are coming together. The Bible says, I will bring your sons from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at thy sight. Why? Because of the glory of the Lord upon your life. Praise God. I prophesied as I was commanded. Now, after he's prophesied, he said, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9, also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied again as I was commanded. And breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. This was a valley full of dry bones. This valley of dry bones has delivered an exceeding great army. You see, your hopeless situation can deliver an exceeding great abundance. An exceeding great abundance. An exceeding great life. And you think it was hopeless situation. See, that situation that you call hopeless, there's something in it that you've got to call out. There's something in it. Hallelujah. So that's the mirror principle. I could keep going, but my time is up. I've got two more principles to share with you. The second one is the boast principle. The boast principle. Say, so when we boast, we boast in the Lord. Yes. Say, so we have nothing of ourselves to boast of ourselves, but, but when we do boast, we boast in the Lord. The boast principle. Yes. And the boast principle calls into effect testimonies. Yes. What has the Lord done? Yes. My God, but my God, but my God, but my God shall supply. <laughs> so, so you're saying, you have nothing. You say, but my God. In other words, settle down, settle down, settle down. Settle, settle. It's okay. Don't worry. My God shall supply. My God shall supply. All your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In other words, I trust in him so much that he, he will do anything. But my God. But my God. And they're saying, there's nothing left. You say, but my God. And, and, and why? Because you know your God. What, what did he say about those who know their God? They shall be strong and do exploits. Then both my God. The boast principle is important to apply the boast principle. When you say, Lord, I know that you are able to do much more. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ever ask or imagine. In other words, where I stop thinking, that's where he starts. So I'd rather set a huge bar for the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And can you ever set a huge bar for the Lord? How much bar can you set? The higher you set, the better it becomes. So if I were you, I will set a huge bar for him. Set it by, set it by. Lift it as, as far as your eyes can see. Lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. So is that all you could do? Is that all you could do? I, I'll tell you a story very quickly. I think I should continue this on Sunday. I, I'll tell you a story very quickly. The, this guy, this guy, the prophet called him, they called the king and said, hit the ground. And the guy said, all, all right. Okay, so the guy hit the ground. One, two, three, four, five, and he stopped. And the prophet said, but why did you stop? Why did you stop? He said, because if you had not stopped, you would have annihilated your enemies completely. Why did you stop? 
You see, at times it's important that you set the bar. Don't stop dreaming. Brothers, don't stop dreaming. Sisters, don't stop dreaming. Keep dreaming. Because the situation you thought was hopeless, in that hopelessness, in the state of hopelessness, dream. The only thing you should not allow to be taken from you is your dream. Your capacity, your ability to dream. Your ability to see yourself outside the situation. Jonah, you remember Jonah? He, he was right in the belly of the fish. Right inside the belly of the fish, he prayed to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. And he said, they that observe lying vanity forsake their own mercy. You consider your present circumstances. You forsake the blessing, the grace of the Lord that brings salvation to all. So they, they, they forsake their own mercy. So you might think you are in the deepest of the deep. Never lose the capacity to dream. Never lose the capacity to dream. Say, Lord, I've set the bar high that they, people will see and glorify your name. My dream will bring glory to your name. My dream, my thoughts, my actions. Say, I might be here right now, but this is not where I belong. This is not where I belong. Soon, I will, I will open my wings and fly. Open my wings. Open my wings. Open my wings and soar like the eagle. I might be sitting here, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, renew their strength. They shall march up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? Because I belong to the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The, both, the boasting principle is important. Boast in the Lord. Boast in the Lord. Say, I will say of the Lord. He's my refuge and my strength. My God in whom will I trust? Boasting in the Lord. Boasting in the Lord. He said, rejoice not over me, O my enemy. <laughs> Boasting in the Lord. The lines are falling unto me in good and pleasant places. Boasting in the Lord. I have a godly heritage. Mmm. 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 When the world say there is a casting down, Ayebo Yoko Sota. I will say there is a lifting up, lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Everything that I do prospers. Whatever I put my hand for to do, I touch it, it changes for good. It changes for good in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In my life, there's nothing they call a hopeless situation. I may find myself in that situation, but I do not remain there. There is always a change, and that change starts from the inside. It starts from my spirit, in the name of Jesus. It starts from my spirit. There is the, the spirit of God is in me. There's a breath in man. The breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Gives him understanding. When I turn on that understanding, nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop me. In the name of Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Nima shoko so paraba. Linda bradiasko tolo badi sutara. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's my refuge and my strength. My God in Him will I trust. Nangrabayasuto paraba. Retabaraba. Non sote baraba. Linda bradiasko tolo ba. They shall surely gather together. <laughs> not by me, not by me, not by me. 
not by me. See, whoever shall gather together for your sake shall fall for thy sake. So let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Carry this on. Carry it on. Carry it on. Regardless of how dire the situation is. Cause a change in it. Cause a change in it. Remember the words that you've heard tonight. Cause a change in it. It might be simple few words. But let them become what directs your life. What causes you, or rather what keeps you on your toes. And change the circumstances for good. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See, tonight... Tonight, something has started happening. And that is why when we go out tomorrow morning, we've already spoken it tonight. There's no, there's not, uh, there's no situation hard enough that will block the hearts of the people. No, 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 no. We have successfully delivered them to the Lord. We just talked about the dr- valley of dry bones. Paris is the valley of dry bones. Yes. So we say to Penrith, oh ye dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. We start at Jemison Town, you know, Jemison Park, tomorrow, Jemison Park. Oh ye dry bones, hear the voice of the Lord. 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 Hear the prophecy of the Lord. Hmm. Out of, out of, out of Penrith, out of Blacktown, out of the Blue Mountain area, shall come for the exceeding great army. Army for righteousness. Army for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. As we go out, we are named stars. Stars. And the Lord knows us by name. And as we go out and speak to others, we are lighting up their lives. Lighting up their lives. And causing them to come out of the valley and stand up tall as, you know, exceeding great army. In the name of Jesus, many are giving their lives to God tomorrow. Those who were resistant to the gospel all of a sudden find themselves in ground zero. Where they are saying, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? And we will respond, repent and believe the gospel. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We go out with such boldness. In the name of Jesus, everyone who will be out tomorrow go out with such boldness. They do not go out on their own. They carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They are smeared with the anointing. Smeared with the anointing. Smeared with the anointing. So much so that no one can stand against you successfully. As you are speaking the words, it continues to change lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we dedicate tomorrow to you. It's your day. It's a day of harvest. It's a day of harvest. We are harvesting and bringing our sheaves with us. In the name of Jesus, we are bringing your people home. In the name of Jesus, every spirit, every spirit of fear, we speak against it tonight. In the name of Jesus. And in your children, we infuse boldness. In the name of Jesus. To preach the gospel, to speak to the sick, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to raise the dead in the name of Jesus. Now is the time, now is the time for your voice to be heard on high. And thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are using us in this day and in this hour to bring many to the kingdom. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Bringing them home. We're bringing them home. We have seen so many pictures. We've seen so many pictures. We, are, we, we have imagined way much more than our current environment. We're bringing them home. Exceeding great army. 
exceeding great army. You believe that? Yes. Exceeding great army. So yes. before you go, bet, go to bed tonight, go back to uh, Ezekiel chapter 37 and prophesy as he has commanded. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now may I suggest to those who are not here tonight, if you are in Penrith, meet us at Jamison Town, uh, Jamison Park tomorrow morning at 10.30. We are going to be there. We're going to set fire in that field by the gospel. You know, as we stand there and extend ourselves, everyone that, will, that comes around 200 meters around us will feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They'll get pulled towards you. They'll want to see what is going on. There are some who might say, I don't even know what to say. No, don't worry. You might not even know what to say. Just come. Just come. That's all you need. Just come in the name of Jesus. So in the morning, tomorrow morning here, we are praying at 10 o'clock before we all head out. We're praying here at 10 o'clock in the morning. So, hey, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We've had an amazing time tonight. We've had an amazing time. You know, and go in this strength and cause the change that you need. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow morning.